uh, let's see, verse 12. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was taught it, but received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul is re really referring back to both the salutation of verse 2, uh, and all the brethren which are with me and unto the churches of Galatia, uh, and the next verse, which we'll see here in verse 13, in that his commission came from God himself to preach the good news to the Gentiles and not from men. Um, his commission was based on a divine revelation from the Most High God, whose proof was in the resurrection from the dead of Jesus. Uh, this is not man's gospel, as we talked about in the last verse, or something learned or imitated from a book, uh, or something that he thought up. It was something he lived out uh, and and eventually was you know killed for. Uh, it was the truth in every sense of the word. Uh, one of the things, one of the most interesting proofs, I think, of the veracity of the resurrection uh, was the fact uh, that all of the all of the people who are witness to it that we know of, i.e., the apostles, the original apostles, uh, legend has it that they all went to separate places, uh, uh, all the far flung corners of the known world, and preached the gospel to people, but did not. Uh, and did not recant their story. You know, my, 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 the most famous one, perhaps, or the most interesting one is perhaps Thomas. Uh, you know, Thomas is actually very highly revered in the southern part of India uh, by the Nasrani St. Thomas Christians. He got on a boat, legend has it, that, and sailed over to, Tom, sailed over to India uh, and got there and uh, did, did miraculous works and baptized people and all this stuff. Uh, and as evidence to that, there are people there that have, they practice a very old form of Christianity that has very, heavily, very heavy elements that are Semitic uh, in nature and uh, you know, very sort of Jewish uh, in nature. And they trace, their, they trace their beginnings all the way back to Thomas. Uh, you can even go to a hill outside of, uh, uh, I think it's Bangalore, India. You can actually go to a hill outside Bangalore, and uh, there is a site where it's believed that, that Paul was, was, was pierced. His side was pierced through this Brahmin sword. Uh, Peter as well, you know, he goes to Rome. I mean Thomas, sorry. Thomas, yeah. Peter, Peter as well goes to Rome, uh, and he is, you know, he is hung upside down uh, uh, because he said, I, you know, I can't hang in the same position as my Lord, you know, as his final request. So he's, so he's crucified on an upside-down cross. All of these people go to far-flung corners of the world and die horrible deaths and not recant their story. Uh, now, it's conceivable that a group of people could sort of do that to, to hold on to a lie, but not when you go to a place and there's no telephones, no mode of communication, uh, and you can just, all you have to do is recant and go back to where you were and just say, man, I just really laid it out over there in, you know, in, in India or Rome or, or you know, wherever. And, boy, I told a story, and nobody could just believe it. And many are baptized, and there's all sorts of people going there. You know? They could have done that and gotten away, escaped with their lives, but they didn't. Uh, and so that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind, uh, that this is, this is the truth. And in Paul's case, he received it from a direct revelation of Jesus Christ, which is what he's talking about here in verse 12. Chris? Right. It says, um, you know, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, the re what Paul's essentially doing is he's, there are two Gospels at hand. You know, the, the Galatians are saying, well, which one is it? Which one is right? So what Paul's going to do in, in trying to get across here with his testimony is to say that, Okay, you guys remember my gospel. He'll, la he'll say later on, you guys remember all those miracles and everything. You, you guys, the gospel that I was preaching, the gospel that I'm preaching right now, um, I got it from Christ himself. And I know it was Christ himself because I went and confirmed it with the apostles, and they recognized that Christ and I had, you know, got together in this, and they recognized, and they, they as he says, they extended the right hand of fellowship to him and to Barnabas. So he's saying that, He's validating that he got his gospel from Christ, and then he's saying that, and that gospel was uh, confirmed by the apostles, and we'll see that these people agree with Peter, and Peter was actually kind of going astray, as we'll see later here with them in, in a small, slight way. So they're agreeing with Peter, so he's appealing to their belief uh, that Peter and James are the true apostles, 
but he's saying that he, he got this uh, completely separate. Um, so that's kind of the flavor of what he's trying to do, why he's so adamantly saying that I neither received this from man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, man, great point, great points. Uh, see, verse 13, For you have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. Uh, so Paul, of course, used to be named Saul. Uh, he was a member of the Sanhedrin when in Acts 5 the Sanhedrin met in secret and were trying to figure out what to do with this new movement. Uh, he held the coats of those who even stoned St uh, Stephen, you know, one of, the, one of the first converts there, one of the first believers. Uh, and really, because of this conduct, he, I think it's verse, maybe verse 8 or, or chapter 8 or chapter 9 of Acts where he says he just breathed out hatred. He just seethed with hatred. And the idea is that he's just screaming with hatred. Uh, and we see that here. He's, he, he persecuted the church of God violently. Uh, and he was feared throughout Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond for throwing the brothers and early followers of Jesus into prison, sentencing them to death or more. Um, yet, as we will see, he became the perfect vessel to convey God's mercy to the Gentiles. And that's what I think, uh, speaking sort of uh, more globally here at these, at these uh, verses here, 11 through 24, that's what's really interesting about this uh, to me, is that God took this guy who's a Pharisee of the Pharisees, and sent him to the people that were the Gentiles, the people that he ultimately would have seen as like the most unfit for salvation as a Pharisee. God now took this person, renamed him, and sent him to those people. You know, it's really, it's really interesting how God sort of works in that, the, the symmetrical blessing and cursing that God sort of works to point back to his, to his glory there. Um, I suppose that's a little bit off, off track there, but uh, Chris? Okay, uh, well, he's saying, um, you've heard of my conversion in times past in the Jews' religion and how beyond measure I persecuted the church and wasted it. Now, he, Paul's persecutions of the church are detailed in Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, and Acts chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. And, and it's interesting that he says, for ye have heard, or for you have heard, um, and everyone had... Um, heard how Paul came to the Lord. I mean, he was pre presuming that everybody had heard about that. And so his story was familiar to Christians in general, uh, especially to, uh, this is what I'm reading from a commentary of David Guzik here, uh, Christians in general, and especially to those he had personally ministered to. Uh, we can trust that if Paul was among a group of people for a while preaching the gospel to them, it wouldn't be long until he shared his personal testimony. Um, and I think that's a good point. I mean, our personal testimony in our own lives is a really uh, powerful thing. In the DVD tracks that we do, I mean, most of those are just testimonies from people that have come out of different things. But it's also important if you don't have uh, an amazing testimony, that's still uh, um, something that should be shared. I mean, I think sometimes you feel like, well, mine didn't have any fireworks or anything. But, you know, a lot of us didn't have any firework type uh, conversion experiences, but they... Um, our evidence, um, when, you, when you tell them, it really does help people. So, mm -hmm. it's, uh, so yeah, that's all I have on that one. That's, you know, that's interesting you bring up, you bring up that idea of uh, not having fireworks necessarily. So many people, uh, I sense a, sometimes I, feel, I get a sense of regret a little bit, just a tinge of regret from other brothers who've been walking with the Lord their whole lives and never, never made a mess of themselves, and then God had to rescue them. Um, they kind of feel like, well, maybe I missed out on something, or maybe, you know. I actually think, yeah, I think those people need to really stop and say, look, I'm lucky. I'm not a mess, you know. Like, God, <laughs> <laughs> and so often I, uh, so, you know, they're they're sort of lucky, you know. They've been walking their whole life with God, and you know. <laughs> That's God. a good point. So, um, let's see, uh, verse 15 and 16. Uh, but when Actually, he, uh, verse 14. Oh, verse 14? Okay, thanks. Uh, and I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for tradition of my fathers. Now, it's interesting to see here precisely what Paul slash Saul was jealous for. Uh, he was jealous for the traditions of men, uh, the traditions of his father specifically, as he says. This brings up something that, I, that is important to keep in mind. Uh, and that is don't let the, the traditions come into conflict uh, and become gospel or holy if God does not call them so. 